Hello, everybody. Welcome to Weekly Trash, the safe place to cleanse your mind, body, and soul of all that trash you consume this week so you can consume some more tomorrow. I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I am sitting next to the one and only Ty French, everybody. (laughs) You guys. Your energy. I love it. I just have to preface. My voice is a little gone. We love it, though. I'm a party rat, but also... (laughs) It's kind of making me sound a little straighter than I normally sound. Oh, yeah. So Sexy. I just don't want to get any of... I know you have a strong female audience. I don't want them to get confused. <laughs> they, I am a homosexual. He is gay. <laughs> He's not going to But also, if my voice is raspy and annoying, that's why. But I kind of like it. It's sexy, thanks, for sure. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Thanks, thanks. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming. You are a travel god. You're all over the place. It's just, too much. I'm tired. Like you just came from Arizona, which you're from Arizona, right? I'm from Arizona. I'm from Utah. Okay. So we're going to we're gonna talk about yeah, We're yeah. going to do a dumpster deep dive. Yes. Literally go so deep into who Thai French is. I can't wait. It's been so long since I've been deep. Oh, we're, we're deep <laughs> in there. We're deep in there, Thai. Okay. So dumpster deep dive. Today's dumpster deep dive is brought to you by Thread. Let's dive into practical style with Thread. They've given the classic leather wallet a sleek update, focusing on simplicity and embracing the mission to carry on. Thread is your go-to for all things carry and self-expression. Now, let me share why I'm hooked on Thread's essentials, like the vertical wallet, wrist lanyard, lip balm holder. There is nothing worse than digging through your bag full of random stuff, so I cut out the chaos with Thread. The vertical wallet is my go-to solution, and the wrist lanyard and lip balm holder make everything I need just one reach away, simplifying my life and keeping me organized. And as a mom, I need that. So check out the entire collection, including these must-haves at threadwallets.com, where functionality seamlessly meets fashion with thread. Use code weeklytrash for 20% off your purchase. And thanks, Thread, for sponsoring today's episode. Where are you from? Okay, so I moved around a ton growing up. Why? Just like work? Just like random shit for my dad. Okay. Um, Am I allowed to curse on here? Oh, we say fuck, bitch, cunt, whatever. (laughs) Puss, puss, puss. Pussy, cunt, bitch. um, So always just like different random things. I was born in Utah. I was born in Payson. And then- You were a little cowboy. Yes. yes. I mean, yeehaw. Yeah, Mm. you're wearing the cowboy boots. Um, And then I- Basically, immediately moved to Kansas, Kansas City, Kansas. Okay, for like a the year. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, mm-hmm. go like, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, go Travis, go Taylor. Um, and then, then I moved to Arizona. I lived there for like five years. Okay. Went to um, kindergarten there, whatever. Then we moved back to Utah. I lived in Provo. Moved to Orem. Moved to Alpine. And then in eighth grade, I moved to Arizona. Oh my gosh. And then senior year of high school, I moved to Virginia. <laughs> And I graduated high school there, and then I moved back to Utah, and then now I live in LA. Okay, what did your dad do that, like, made... It was literally always just random stuff. Like, oh, gosh, yeah. How, how do we do want to get into Yeah, it? like, okay, so what was your childhood like? Are your parents still married? Yeah, my parents are still married. I have okay. six siblings. You do? Well, where, I'm one of six, so I have five others, I guess. Where are you in the lineup? I'm the fourth. Okay. And we 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 had, like, a pretty good financial situation growing up like my dad owned his own construction company and then obviously like the recession hit and yeah also like muchacho see you later to all the funds yeah and we were living in alpine everything was great we were building this huge house yeah alpine's richy rich for those yeah like my next door neighbor was like a gold medal olympian yeah it's next level money and but like that just kind of i mean i was young i was in seventh grade i didn't really know you know yeah and Utah, I feel like, is such a bubble. Such a bubble. But then literally within like six months, economy crashed. My dad joined the army and my mom was working at Walmart. <laughs> like it was like full. Full 180. 180. Yeah, it was crazy. Wait, the he literally joined the military. When he was 40 years old when I was in seventh grade. But then literally, I mean, the story just keeps getting worse. Okay. Literally the day... Or it was like the week of his like graduation at spring training or whatever. Yeah. Not spring training. I was just in Arizona, <laughs> you guys. I'm obviously a sports person. Yeah, obviously. Um, you're wearing a hat. Ba- <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a baseball hat. Um, Gucci, Gucci. Uh, what do they call it? Basic training. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you go away. He was gone for like six months, whatever. Yeah. Fell down, broke his hip. So then he got like... That's why you don't do it at 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you don't do it at 40 after you just had gastric bypass and you lost 300 pounds. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> A lot. We're just adding to this. I wow. Know. Okay. And yeah, sorry guys. I'm also a rambler. I'm a oh. So no, just bear same. with me. This is we're back and forth, back and forth. ADHD all over the place. Literally. Yeah. 
And so long story short, then it was just like kind of bouncing career after career. He yeah. like went back to school. My mom went back to school. Then he ended up being a mechanic. Oh my hell. That's when we moved to Arizona. And then this business that he was involved with, like when I was a kid in Minnesota, like reached back out and was like, do you want the company? Moved to Virginia. And he was like, I guess. I have nothing to lose. But that's like a hot tub. So it was like housing, army, mechanic, hot tub. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't oh know. my! What does he do now? Hot tub. Okay. So he like hot tub. I, 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 his job is hot tub. <laughs> his job is hot tub. No, it's like he he owns like a. His job is hot tub. <laughs> I just watched Barbie, you guys. Okay, so his job is beach. His job is beach. <laughs> um, he. Uh, oh. He owns like where they make the hot tub, and then also like the company where they do like the like trade shows and whatever. Yeah, he's but just full on hot tub. Full on hot tub. Full and on. he literally is like, "Well, son, whenever you." Buy a house, I'll send you a hot tub. I'm like, why don't you help me get the effing house first? <laughs> yeah. I don't need the I hot need tub. Help. I, need, I the need the house. Help there. So growing up, was it a strict household? Like, where, did you grow up religious? Yeah, I grew up Mormon. Okay, you grew up grew Mormon. Up Mormon. Obviously, Utah, the yes, whole shebang. Yes. Um, and I feel like in... It was strict, but it was like, that was just all I really knew. Yeah. And like, we weren't so strict Mormon that... Like, my sisters, like, wore bikinis and, like, okay, things yeah. like that. But, it, like, I wasn't allowed to say, like, oh, my gosh, or, like, I hate you or, you know, okay, like, yeah. things like that. My dad was always, like, I'm the patriarch of this household. Like, Absolutely. like I was not friends with my parents at yeah, all. Yeah, they were superiors. They were my parents. It, it was what it was. Um, and, like, I, I wasn't really friends with any of my siblings either. Really? Has We've, that changed at all throughout the years? No. Or no? Like, no. I got closer with one of my sisters during high school and like we were really close, but like now we're not as close. She's, she's, she still lives in Utah. Um, the rest of them live in Virginia. And so I just never see them. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of my friends, families, they're like so close. And I yeah. think like that is kind of a Utah thing, but. Well, especially there's six of you. So you would think at least there'd be some bond. Are they close with each other? Some of them. I think we were all just so close in age that like, it was just like, too too many cooks in the kitchen. Okay. Like I like all I shared a room until I was a senior in high school. We like always had to like share cars and everything. So I think it was just like get away from me. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, exactly. You. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, you're obviously gay. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> obviously. I mean, read me, bitch. <laughs> no, no. Let's let's talk about that a little because growing up in a religious household. Yeah. That was that was that scary for you? Oh my god, terrifying and like. I just, I never even, I, I didn't know what gay was. Yeah. Like, they don't teach you that in Sunday school. Yeah. <laughs> like, all you know is that, like, being gay is bad. But, like, yeah. I didn't even really know, like, what that meant. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I was bullied, like, my whole life growing up. Really? Like, I was, because, I mean, like you just said, I was very obviously gay. Like, you've always been this way. You've yes. never oh, tried no, to act a Oh, no, it was worse before. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've gotten I, a lot straighter. I love it. Well, the, I, the inner um, homophobia on me has yeah. gotten to me. No, but... Like, I was, like, in school plays. I was in dance. I was doing all the things. You know, all I was very, things. obviously, I was literally wearing, like, pur purple button-ups to school. Like, I was so gay. Okay, but I love that you did that, though. It sounds like you had to have some level of confidence to be able to do that. I definitely have confidence. Like, I always knew I was, like, like, for lack of a better word, a star. Like, I always obviously. knew I wanted to be, you know, Something. who I am yes, now. Yes, yes. Took me, took me a few uh, skins to get there. Yeah. <laughs> I went through some awkward phases, but I was definitely bullied. And obviously with the church, just like very confusing did, time. But Did anyone in your family kind of know? Like if it was so obvious, did it, they ever bring it up? <laughs> like I would, I would mean, I would come home like bawling. Like people would literally like assault me at school, <gasps> like leave like run lunches in my locker. And so no. like obviously I would come home sobbing and my parents would always just be like, like I said, they were very strict. And so it was always like, well, are you gay? Like, because I'd be like, oh, I'm so sad. People are making fun of me because I'm gay and this is this. And they're like, well, are you? And I'd be like, no. And they'd be like, then why are you crying? Like, what's what's the issue then? Like, if, if you're not, then it shouldn't bug you. Yeah. And so I learned to just kind of, I knew I wasn't going to get comfort from them. So like, why yeah. even bring it up? So I just kind of sulked in my own sorrows for a while. Um, and I came out when I was 18 and had you moved out at that point yeah is that why you i waited till i okay. moved out and i was actually living with my grandparents in utah who were on a mission while i was living with them yeah yeah, yeah. it was crazy wait did they were serving in utah yeah 
We're, serving and you taught okay. like literally so like I couldn't play music like I like went to church oh, with them. By the way, I'm gay. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the grandparents were good. Yeah. My parents when I came out shockingly I feel like were more surprised than I thought really? they would be because by the time I had come to terms with the fact that like I was going to come out like I was like I've been bullied since I was four years old that I'm gay like Everyone knows. Like, no one's going to be shocked. Yeah. And I told JC she wasn't shocked. Yeah. I told all my friends. They were like, yeah, duh. Like, like baby, I was born this way. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Not the of Gaga, Gaga. Gaga. Pause up. <laughs> um, but they were, yeah, they were definitely more taken back than I thought. Yeah. And my mom was like, my mom grew up very Mormon, like, is very Mormon. Her family is very Mormon. And my dad was a convert, so I feel like he was a little bit more lax with it. But she was like, what does this mean for you in the church? And I was like, what do you mean? That it was means- her first question? Yeah, yeah. Well, her first thing was, and I mean, mom, if you're listening, I doubt she is, but <laughs> we've, we've gone through this. We're good now. But yeah. they don't, I don't judge anyone for like how they reacted because like this was their first time going through anything like this just yeah. as it was mine. Yeah. But she was like, well, like sexual attraction is not everything in a marriage. And... You know, there are plenty of men who struggle with same-sex attraction who still get married at the temple and whatever. But, like, that's kind of what she was trying to push me into. And, like, she was like, the church has, like, therapy, people that you can go to. Like, you can go talk to your bishop. And I was like, no. Bye-bye. Not going to happen. I told her, I was like, I'm not going to ever do that to, like, my future children. I'm not going to do that yeah. to my future wife. Like, what? I'm going to, like, make someone marry me even though I'm not, like, sexually attracted. What? Yeah. What kind of a life is that? Yeah. And at that point, like, I had fully, like, accepted it. Like, I was, like, kind of getting more excited about it. Had you experimented at all with boys before coming out? So there was this one guy in high school. It was my, one of my good friend's older brothers. And we, we would always kind of, like, relate on the fact that people bullied us that we were gay. Yeah. And, but we were both, like, still telling each other we weren't gay. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. It's this weird, like, unspoken thing. It's like, I knew, he knew, but I don't know. So we would like text and stuff and one day he came by my house and was like, oh, like I'm outside, like come like say hi. And I was like, okay, great. So I came downstairs and said hi. We like kissed like through the window of his car and I was like, what? And then. Was that your first kiss? Had you kissed a girl? Yeah, that was my first kiss. I'm pretty sure. <gasps> Oh my gosh, and that's kind of cute. No. No? Oh, no. okay. Not cute. <laughs> because then he literally was like. I can't remember what happened. I went to school. I don't know if it was the next day or a few days later. And one of my girlfriends came up to me and was like, wait, like there's this like rumor going around that like you made out with, oh my God, I almost just said his name. We'll call him John Doe. I almost just said his name. (laughs) And I was literally just like, I mean, obviously mortified. I was Uh, like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like this cannot get around. Like I have three siblings that go to the school. Like if that spreads, like I'm done. And so I like message him on Facebook because it's, I mean, way before the days of, of any course. other form of communication or yeah. iPhone or anything. And I was like, are you telling people that we kiss? Like, what the F? Like, why would you do this to me? All this stuff. And he basically was like, if you don't tell your bishop, I'm going to. Because we were in the same stake. And oh. I was like, oh, okay, great. I'm going to go kill myself, literally. No, what the fuck? Yeah, it was crazy. So that was my only experience. Yeah, <laughs> like, not cute. gay shit. So... Yeah, I, I definitely didn't test the waters until uh, after I had come out. Did he, was his plan to go to his bishop? I think he probably did. I don't know. I, I don't think I really talked to is him much he, after is that. He, do we know if this man is still pretending to be straight? I don't think so. Okay. Well, and he's he probably mortified over that. But like yeah. also it was just like weird. Like he was older than me and I think I was a freshman. So it was like, it was already just like weird vibes. Yeah, and it was that like was illegal. my he friend's brother him. and like it was just all, but that's what's hard is like, I don't, I don't even judge him for that or like yeah. whatever. Obviously he's dealt with everything that I've dealt with. Like just you turn into just a bad person when you have to like literally hide who you are, you know? No, I totally see that. So that's, but. that's oh man, that's the bummer though, that that was your first experience. Yeah. It was very traumatizing. I was definitely like a little like suicidal after it. I was just like, I'm done. Like I'm out. See you later. Like it was just like piling after piling and, the bullying, and then once people knew, I was like, oh, my God. What helped you push through that? Weirdly, like, I had a nightmare one night that I, like, had done it. And yeah. I have a little sister, and at the time, I don't even know how old she was, like, in 
elementary school and like I had a dream that like she was the one who like found me and I woke up and I was like never like I'll never do that like that's so dumb that I even like let this situation like let me get there but yeah it's just I mean when you're like growing up you're already like so emotional and there's already so many hard things yeah. that like you have to go through and then for that to just be one of them and literally to have no one to talk to about it it's like a really weird thing because typically when you go through things you know you talk to your friends about it yeah you talk to whatever like I didn't talk to anyone about it for 18 years not one single person so what did it feel like when you finally felt like you could I'm coming out <laughs> I want the world to know oh my god no literally I was like Ansel Elgort you're hot I'm tweeting about it I want a cake that says I'm gay like I was like yes oh I was like painting yes. rainbows on jean jackets yes. I was go to pride click click clacking about I was loving it yes I love that yeah so after you came out to your parents and your family have they did they ever come to a point where they like fully accepted you like do you feel like they fully accept you I think they, I think they do. I think, and maybe this is incorrect, but if for, to my knowledge, since the day I came out to my mom, we haven't talked about it since. Oh, okay. That was 10 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> haven't talked about it since, but like, she's like met like my like ex-boyfriend and like whatever. I know it makes her uncomfortable, but I'm the type of person where I don't, you don't have to like accept me you don't have to you don't have to be comfortable about it you don't have to do anything you just have to respect me For and sure. allow me to be whoever i want to be hello that's why we live in america and Amen. so i think we have like a mutual respect and i was more scared to tell my dad because he was like so scary growing up he was like terrifying he was a military man yeah literally terrifying and we just we were never friends like he's so like my little brother is like his like mini me twins like they were always you know out there in the car and working on shit whatever and he would always make me join like he would always make me play halo with them or whatever i'm like i'm not gonna be the boy that you want me to be i don't like this so i was just so scared to tell him and weirdly enough he was a lot more chill than my mom was um but and now like he'll he'll ask me here or there like slyly he'll be like oh like are you dating anyone or this like yeah we've come around a little bit more but it took a while like because when when I first came out, like my mom was like, if you got married, I don't think I'd go. Really? And my dad also kind of was like, yeah, I don't know. And like, that's going to be so hard to like tell the kids, like my niece and nephews or whatever. And I was just like, what? Like, that's such a weird thing to say. But they've come around now for sure. And like, he's apologized to me about like how okay. he reacted. And Good. yeah. But, Ty, that makes me really sad. It, that's like, so sad. It is. But I just think I, I try to... I mean, I feel like my life is, I mean, many chapters, but it's like book one, book two. Yeah. That's book one. And like, we don't read it again. Yeah. You know, we just go back to book two. So like, I don't, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm so far removed from it that it doesn't make me emotional. And I try to like have grace for parents of like, they're going through everything for the first time too. Yeah. No one taught my mom what to do if your kid's gay. Yeah. Like she thought she was doing what she thought was right. And same thing with my dad. Like my dad told me, he was like, he was like, I was so strict on you guys growing up. And he's like, looking back now, he's like, I regret it. But he's like, I was 19, got married, started having kids, had a kid basically every year for six years. And he's like, I just didn't want you guys to be drug addicts or homeless. Yeah. So he's like, I don't know, you know, that's no, it's so, so I try true. To give him a little grace. Well, you're a good son for doing that. Cause a lot of, a lot of times that grace is yeah. not given and yeah. then it, completely ruins the, right. the and, relationship yeah and I think also I tried to always have the mindset of like it could be a lot worse like I I like to give give myself like my flowers of like yeah like I did go through something hard and it was hard but also there are parents who like literally kick out their kid never talk to him again physically abuse them so you know I'm like at least I didn't get that but still awful that yeah. you even had that kind of reaction Let's talk about something happier, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, Um, You are so talented in photography. Oh, my gosh. But you're also so talented in front of the camera. Oh, wow. You're a full-on model. When did that start? Once I learned how to do makeup. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, okay. kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I think... So I, I started as a photographer when I was 15. We... That was, like, during our poor era. Yeah. When we weren't Love making that. that much money. Yeah. And my sisters started graduating high school and then getting married. 
And we just had no money to like pay for a wedding. Like the wedding was shock eyeing, like Trader Joe's, like uh, doing the flowers ourselves. Like, yeah. Not cute. Was that in the ward chapel? Yeah. yeah. No, one of them was, I think, in the chapel. One of them was in just like our neighbor's backyard, typical okay. Utah. Yeah, yeah very Utah. Arizona. And then a million people show up, and that's why they're, yeah, right. You can't afford to pay for anything because right. you're having to pay for everyone to get a soda. Literally, it's like your mom's bishop when she was five. <laughs> yep, yep. But, um, I I kind of started like thinking about wanting to do photography. I was literally a child, but we had this film reunion every year and my uncle always had like this big camera and he would always like take photos of everyone during it. And I just like always loved that. Like I always lo- loved looking back on the memories yeah. of it. And so I was like, wait, mom, like get me a camera and then I'll just shoot their weddings. And so like one year for Christmas, I got a camera and I started shooting my sister's weddings and like their senior photos and then their friends wanted their senior photos. And then one of my sister's like wedding photos kind of like went viral on Pinterest and Instagram. And that just kind of started my photography career. And then that kind of led into me being an influencer. And do you feel like you were able to, do you feel like becoming a photographer and becoming a model? I don't know when you officially took that title. Uh, I, I'd never take that title, but yeah. I'll gladly wear but it. But you are a model, oh my gosh, Ty. You are a model. Nice. Do you gosh. feel like that also helped you embrace like who you were and like gave you the confidence? Totally, totally. A hundred percent. And I think a lot of that is like faking it till you make it, you For know? Sure. And like, I don't think I've still made it, you know? It's like, there, I obviously have my own insecurities and things, but it kind of like... When I, would, when I was traveling for photography, like people were booking me in weddings for like Costa Rica, Paris, yeah. all these places. And I would go alone. And in my free time, I'd be like, well, I guess I'm just going to set up the tripod and start taking photos. And so I just learned like kind of early on how to be in front of a camera. But I weirdly enough, like still almost prefer doing it myself, like on a tripod. Yeah. I don't like being photographed. People like other photographers will reach out and be like, I want to shoot you. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not a model. Like I, I know how to take a pretty photo. Of myself. Well, yeah, when you're the one doing it. I want to be yeah. in control of the full vision and yeah. everything, but yeah. no, I don't know. So you don't think you're a model? No, but I know how to take okay. a good photo. Yeah, that's the- I know my angles, and I'm so glad you let me sit on this side because this <laughs> is my good side. It's actually everyone's good side. Really? I feel like everyone that comes are like, thank goodness. And I'm like, am I taking one for the team? Like, No, yeah, no, <laughs> this is, this is like, the good every side. Every single time. No, you look snatched. Oh so you... Moved to LA. Mm-hmm. How old were you when you moved to LA? I was like 19. Was that terrifying or were you like, get me the fuck really out of Virginia? Wasn't. Where were, cause you so, were in Virginia. No, so I was in Utah. Oh, you went back to Utah. I went back to Utah for a year after I graduated high school. Cause I was just like, get me out of Virginia. Like, but please. Utah was where, cause you want to live with your grandparents. My grandparents had like a basement apartment, <laughs> yeah. like most houses in Utah. And that's what all my siblings did when they graduated high school. They just like moved in with grandma. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was like passing the torch. It was my turn now. <laughs> and a lot of my friends from high school in Arizona obviously like went up to like BYU and UVU For and all sure. that. So did it was you just want like, to go to college? No, no. Yeah. No, same. never want to go to college. By the time I, by the time I was 18, like by the time I graduated high school, like I was already making so much money doing photography. Like I was like traveling the world. I like barely graduated high school. Cause they were like, you've literally haven't been here in three months. So I was like, sorry about it. I'm not fashion incredible. week. But, um, and that was another part of the reason why I was moving back to Utah is because I was shooting so many Mormon weddings. Yeah. And I mean, moneymaker literally there's a million there yeah um but yeah then I always knew I wanted to end up in LA it was just about like saving up money and stuff and I had gone like a few times and looked at apartments and I'd never been to LA before and like I'd been like Disneyland like when I was a kid of course and when I went to look at apartments I was like didn't know what areas to look in and I was looking in scary areas and so I kind of like delayed it for a little bit yeah and then I went through my first breakup and I was like so depressed and I was just like hating my life. And so I ended up moving in with my my girlfriend's family in Newport oh, okay. on Babel Island. Yeah. Oh, pretty. And they kind of like nursed me back to <laughs> mental health. Yeah. And so I lived with them for like maybe nine months and just like saved up my money. And then I moved up to LA. And how's it been? I love it. Like you literally, it? I... I tell people all the time, like, I travel a ton. I'm always out of town. But, like, L.A. is, I've lived in a lot of places. This is the only place that, like, I'm, like, excited to return home to. Really? Yeah. It's definitely, like, this is probably, I mean, now I'm getting old. This is probably the place where I've now lived the longest, like, for one point of time. Because I was just moving so so much. much. So now, like, this is home. Even when I go back to Utah, I'm, like, 
there's like a deja vu and like a nostalgia I feel yeah. for it, but it doesn't feel like that's where I'm from. Yeah. So is this where you want to be forever? I think so. Really? I don't know if I'll stay in like the heart of LA forever. Like maybe yeah. I would do like Newport or like Malibu or something, but Ooh, I feel Malibu. like I'm an LA girl. Cause also the weather's just so perfect. Now I will never live anywhere. I mean, I'm not shoveling snow. No, you would I die at my house. I hate humidity. No. Like it's just not gonna work. LA's perfect. Yeah, no. I will say though, there is humidity here though, a little bit. No. I mean, like, coming from Utah, to Utah, coming from Utah, I'm like, yes. What's happening? I'm wet. Mama, <laughs> go live in Virginia for a year. You will never think that LA is humid again. People tell me that, and I'm like, that's coming from people in Utah yeah, or Arizona, driest, which I get. I get. Driest places. Yeah. Imagine moving from Utah and Arizona to Virginia. Literally, it is so humid. It is disgusting. You can't have spray tan on. See you later. You right. cannot wear white. See you later. So gross. If you have curly hair, bye. Do you have curly hair? I feel like you have a little it's bit. Pretty of curly. curly. I do have. It's curly It's weird hair because too. my hair was so straight, like as a kid, and then when I was eighteen, and I you went through that gay. breakup. Literally, oh my god, I was like so cute right when I came out. Then I like met my first boyfriend. We broke up. I shaved my head. I went through like a full like Brittany a moment, <laughs> and it was atrocious. But then it grew back curly. No way. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah, and I think probably like the like salt on the air here definitely yeah. helps. No, it looks gorgeous. Thanks, thanks. Gorge. So. Do you have a boyfriend right now or are you single? Because you said, you know, your raspy voice, you might yeah. be turning on the ladies. But like, <laughs> sorry guys, not as type. It might turn on the guys too, hopefully. Yeah. hopefully. Uh, There's a few. There's a few No, 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 no. I'm single for sure. I, I haven't been in a relationship since my last relationship. I was 22. Oh, wow. So it's been a minute. I'm 27. You're, you're 27. I'm about okay. to turn 28 in July. And yeah, my last relationship was definitely Rocky Roads. Like... He, he was a lot older than me. I was 22. I was like kind of newer to, I'd lived in LA for a while, but like I'm, I never had a fake ID. Like I never went out. Like I lived here for literally like four years before I went to a bar. Like, yeah. And so he kind of was wrapped up in my like getting into like partying and, you know, I was like going drinking for the first time and I went to my first like pride and like all this. And wait, you started drinking for the first time. Yeah. Like I had drank before, but like okay. I drank like once in high school, okay. like out of like vodka out of a water bottle, like in my friend's like closet. Yeah. And then I did like a little bit when I was in Utah, but not really. I wasn't like in like a party era. You were like in, I like, drank the here and there. Era. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where I am okay. right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was like, I mean, partying is obviously very fun, but when you mix like partying with relationships, it gets very messy. Yeah. Because then you're just like drunk fighting for no reason. Yeah. Well, and I don't know if this is true because, again, I live in a Utah bubble. But in Utah, a big part of the gay community, they're like into like not – what's it? What's the word? Monogamous relationships? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like that weirdly is like more popular in Utah than really? it is here. But okay. I mean there is definitely that like side of it. I am so not there. Okay. Like okay. I am a monogamous girly. Okay. Okay. Um, Trust me. Like – I, I, I can't even find one person, let alone two, that want to date me. So I, I think I'm going to stick with the monogamous route. Oh my route. gosh, whatever. But I don't know. I'm not very like, like I like to go out and whatever, but I'm never, I'm, I've never taken someone home from a bar or like, okay. you know, I don't like just like do like one night stands or whatever. Okay. So I don't know. I'm waiting for my Prince Charming. So you want, do you want marriage? Yeah. Yeah. So you want the fairy tale. Yeah. You yeah. You want the fairy tale and you want a monogamous fairy tale. Yeah. Yeah. Because apparently in Utah, a lot of the relationships are not monogamous. No, it's crazy. I was shooketh. No, it's crazy. The swinging there, I don't get it. No, it's with with straight, gay, whatever. Mm. It's all over the place. It's too, I'm just like, why? <laughs> it's crazy. But maybe I'm like, I feel like when I'm in a relationship and I am like in love with someone, like I become like very sexual. Yeah. But like just on my like day-to-day -day life, like I'm not like, oh my God, I haven't been dicked down in <laughs> six months. I got to go. I, I got to go to a bar. I need one. I said like, I got to find someone. I got to go on Tinder. Like I'm just yeah. not there. Yeah. You know? No. no. So, so I don't know. I can't imagine like having the love of your life, being married and then being like, I still need more. It's like, what do you mean? No, that's, it's crazy. Go have sex with your partner. No, truly. But I don't judge. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, <laughs> we've had some people submit their trash or trash and they're like, we just had a threesome for the first time and loved it. And I'm like, good for you. Oh my, no, good for you. Guess good for what? You. Wish I wasn't a jealous little oh, bitch. Like, oh, I could never. I could never. I could never. I'd be like, you looked at him for five seconds too long. You love him. No. You hate me. No, truly. I told my husband, I'm like, if we ever did that, like I could do something. 
but right. you can't do anything. <laughs> right, 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 right. But also, <laughs> I don't even want my partner to look at me during sex, oh. let alone someone else watch me get... No, uh-uh. Uh-uh. no, 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 no. The because angles? Like, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. My, no, my no. new bed headboard, this might be TFI, but no, my never. new bed headboard is like two like long mirrors. Oh. And every time I post up my story, people are oh. like, oh my gosh, like you must be so kinky. Like you're so dirty. You have a mirror as a headboard. I'm like, A, since I've had oh. it, I haven't had sex. <laughs> Two, absolutely not. It's my worst nightmare. That's probably why I've had sex. You get them I'm like, tinted. I'm like, turn off the lights. <laughs> Do not look at that reflection because who knows what my stomach looks like. No, 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 no. no I don't cover no. on the lights. No, when people have like mirrors on their ceiling, I'm like, no, no. No, no. I don't even like to look at a mirror standing up no. straight. <laughs> like it's not gonna work. The horizontal, absolutely not. No. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. So, what's been the hardest part about living here, though? Do you feel like you've been able to make new friendships? Yeah, I have the best group of friends here. It's crazy. I've obviously been through. I mean, I've lived here for almost ten years, so I've been through the cycles. some different friend groups, and yeah. you know, I've learned my lessons and. I've been in like friend groups that like we're more into partying, not into partying. I have a big group of friends that are actually like a lot of us are from Utah, um, grew up Mormon, the whole shebang. So like, oh, yeah. it's nice to have that to relate to. Um, but I, yeah, I wouldn't say that friends is the hardest part. I'm trying to think what the hardest part of LA is. I don't know. I think just like, no, cause I, almost, I feel like it's almost worse than Utah. I was going to say like the, con- the constant, I mean, just like with our job, like podcasting and like influencing and being on Instagram, like everything being so about image, like it is like very materialistic. I I do feel like I'm a pretty materialistic person. Same. Clearly. Yeah. Um, But so that I feel like can get, you can get sucked into that a little bit. And then I'll, I'll like go back to Virginia or Utah or whatever. And I'm like. Oh, okay. Like no one cares that this I doesn't matter. that I just spent two thousand dollars on these shoes. Like literally, no one cares. So why did I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Do you I ever, also kind of love that. So do you ever get sucked into the, like the compar- comparison side of living in LA and seeing other people get jobs? That's what the- I was gonna say. Like I do think that, but I almost think it's worse in Utah. Like really? within the Mormon community, I feel like comparison is like their number one thing. The thief Everyone of joy. has like the same hair, the same extensions, the same lash lift. The same this, this, that, that, that. And I feel like here there is sections of that. Like there is like groups that you can get sucked into that like really care about that. That, you know, are using face app on every photo that like really care about their image that have to go to every event, get photographed by the photographer. But I'm just not really in those groups. And I feel like if you surround yourselves in the right areas in LA, like there's just so much culture here. There's so much more like different types of people from different walks of life grew up different are doing different jobs and everything i feel like in other places that i've lived it's more like cookie cutter yeah you know yeah do you feel like you've been able to find new friendships that have like helped you learn things for your career or like professionally um yeah i feel like most of those are like like my best friend tessa lives here yes. she's from utah tessa barton I'm shout obsessed out obsessed with her she's amazing tessa app shout out go download yeah um and like jc is a big friend yeah. of mine um and chelsea and they live in newport um but those are probably the relationships that i have closest to my life that have like really helped me like further my career the most and yeah. just they're the best like tessa is literally like my mom my best friend my sister and my wife how did you meet tessa so what we, do, is that noise? Do you hear that? I'm telling you, sister. Welcome to podcasting <laughs> in Venice, California. <laughs> like, what is happening? Every episode of mine, I have to do a preface at least one time. I'm like, oh, I guess there's a motorcycle gang outside. No, that sounded like a full-on coaling yeah. train. Like, yeah. just what is happening? I've learned to just okay, protect just my peace. And yeah, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. Pretend it didn't happen. Okay. You might not even be able to hear it. Every time I do like a preface in my podcast, yeah. I'm like, sorry, guys. People DM me they're like, we didn't hear anything. Like, stop <laughs> bringing it up. Like, you're actually making or <laughs> like shut up anyways oh my gosh wait what was the question okay, how'd you oh. meet Tessa? so we met i was in i kind of felt like i was like one of the photographers slash instagrammers of arizona like in the mormon world and yes. like jc and then tessa was that of utah and i think this was even maybe before like you couldn't do instagram dms or anything so yeah. we like became friends on facebook and started messaging and then just one time when i went out for like my cousin's wedding we shot and hung out and we've been besties ever since game over yeah game over do you like shooting with friends like do you guys ever go out and go let's go like take pics yeah no yeah 
24 seven. Yeah. Like what is a typical day for Thai French? Oh God. Because your work is all like on your schedule in yeah, some way. Yeah. It, it, it fluctuates depending on like what stage of life I'm in. Like right now I'm podcasting like way more than I'm shooting. Yes. But I used to like obviously shoot like all the time. Now I'm traveling so much. So I feel like I'm so shooting much. more and podcasting less. Like it kind of just fluctuates my day to day. But I feel like my typical week is like I'll probably shoot like twice. A day? No. no oh, okay. No. Like twice, like, I'll, shoot, like, like, wow. I'll shoot like two times in a week. Typically, and then I'll like do podcasting twice in a week. What made you want to start a podcast and why did you start it sooner? Oh my gosh. Because you are in the industry, like you know it exists. I don't know and why. You're so I good at it. I don't know. What, well, thank you. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I beat myself up about it every day. Like, what the fuck? But I, so I used to be with this agency called DBA, and I, I felt like I signed with them. That was like, have you ever heard of them? Yeah, they're, that's a big deal. That was like, that's it. a like big I, deal. I worked my whole career for it. I was so excited. And um, the timing was February 2020. Oh, <laughs> and it was just bummer. bad timing. I felt like I was so excited. I had so many ideas because like then I wanted to start a podcast with them. I, had the, I wanted yeah. to start a swim, swimsuit line, like all these yeah. things. COVID hit. I got dropped. And I feel like with that just took like so much of my like confidence professionally. For sure. That, like I worked so hard to get this agency to sign me and then like I got dropped and then it was COVID. So then I'm really not getting any work. And depressed as Depressed. Well. Yeah. And so it was this like perfect storm. And I feel like I was kind of going through that breakup with that guy. It took me like literally three and a half years to recover from it. Like I was just oh, wow. like not good mentally. I think just with COVID and stuff, like it was like you just spent so much time alone, so much time indoors. Like you were just like I don't know. The well, election was, was that year. Was just like a lot. Wasn't it your first gay relationship? No, that was my second. Your second? Okay. Yeah. 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 And my first one, I was like 18. I was okay. like, it took me a while to, I, I, it takes me a while to recover from a breakup. <laughs> so you don't go with the rule where it's, it takes half the amount of time that you were together. Oh, mama, I times it by 10. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. It takes me a while, but it's okay. You're just a lover. I think like with that, like, and JC would punch me in the face. She probably wants to. And like, how old were you when you got married? I was 20. Okay. See, so being an adult in a relationship or like having to deal with breakups or whatever, there's um, politics to it. Like, yeah. then it's like, you want to be like, you know, you post a, an Instagram story and see if they watch it or you don't, I don't know. Y you get so much more in your head about what you're posting. And if you're really sad about the relationship and about the breakup, I almost was like withholding things for my audience and for my job because like I didn't want them to know. Yeah. Like I didn't want, cause my ex had nothing to do in the social media space. So yeah. like, then he went private. We unfollowed each other. Like, I, I, I don't know. He could be married with kids. I have no idea. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to give you that access to my life to know. Like, yeah, I'm not going to scratch your itch to be like, Oh, here's a podcast that I give every single detail of my life. And I post everything on Instagram, or whatever. So you're good. Like yeah. you get the itch. Yeah. And I don't know for a while that stopped me like I didn't want I didn't want him to like listen to the podcast and be like wow this is so embarrassing like this is so dumb I can't believe I don't know isn't so, that so annoying how one person just like ruins it so dumb and now I look back and I'm like oh my gosh who cares if he listens to it and thinks like it would have been great content yeah people would have loved it it's so dumb but you know what never too late here we are no it's never too late Tyrant. We started All right the about the same time. Yes. Like you started, I yes. think, like two months before me. Yes. No. And I love when I find a podcast that I actually can like listen to from the beginning to the end. And yours is one of oh them. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. And I die laughing every single oh time. Oh my gosh. Thank like you. Like you're hilarious. Thank you. And your rebrand. Oh. Tyrants rise. <laughs> no, like how did it all come to be? Like what gave you the idea to do that? So uh, it, it started off as the Thai French podcast. Yes. I, this my is my whole the brand Thai French podcast. Podcast, podcast. Yeah. My whole brand is like Thai French. My yeah. name's Tyson. But ever since Instagram has been around, like my handle has been Thai French. And is your just last kinda, name French? Yeah. Okay. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then when I started doing photography or whatever, my page was Thai French photo. Then I went through like a preset phase where I was selling those. And so it was like Thai French presets. My whole brand is just like Thai French. Yeah. And so I was like, that's obviously the name that people already know. I didn't want, I kind of compare it to like blogs. Like yeah. back in the day, there were blogs like before Instagram and it was like, you know, barefoot blonde. They're mm -hmm. like all these things. And 
pink peonies. Yeah. And I feel like we got to a, a place in Instagram where that was like kind of like cringy. Chuggy. Like it's like, no, your Instagram handle should just be your name. Like yeah. don't have it be like a show title. Like stop. So when I was coming up with a podcast, I was like, it's going to be so dumb if I like create like a name for a show. Because yeah. it's going to feel like a blog. It's like in 10 years, it's not going to age well. But like my name is always going to be my name. Yeah. And then also keep in mind, when I created the podcast, I'd never heard a podcast in my life. You never listened to podcasts? No. I listened, Not even what we said? I listened to ones that I was on. Like, I never really listened to it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I just need to make and sure I sounded good. Literally. It. And so I didn't really know what I was getting into. And my, yeah, so don't start from episode one if you go over to listen to Tyrus. Because <laughs> there was a lot of, like, ebbs and flows. There were yeah. a lot of changes. And I now feel like I got to a place where I was like, oh, okay. Like, I know what the show is. Yeah. And I actually do want it to, like, stand apart from Thai French. Like, I don't want it to be just, like... Thai French pride, Thai French photo, Thai yeah. French, Thai French podcast. Yeah. It's like now it's like it is so different than anything else in my docket of like the Thai French brand. Yeah. And I wanted it to like feel like its own special like show. Which it is. And I was already calling my listeners the tyrants. And because I don't know, I just was like a follower and everyone has like their name that they call their audience. Yeah. Like the Valley Girl, yeah, the we're Toasters. The trashers. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I want one. But I'm like, what am I going to call them? Like, Thai French? Like, what? There's <laughs> the Thai like Frenchers. I, I was like, do I call them, like, French fries? Like, do I call them, like, what? <laughs> That's like, actually kind of cute. And someone, DM, literally someone just DM'd me. I'd been talking about it on the podcast. Yeah. I was like, send me ideas, guys. Yeah. And someone DM'd me and they were like, they were like Thai rats. Because, like, I call them, like, rats as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm a feral rat. Yeah. And, or she was like, or Thai rants. Because you literally just ran on the podcast. Yes. And I was like, oh, I love that. So we call them tyrants. And then as I was thinking, like, I wanted the show to kind of have its own name. I was like, what do I name it? What do I name it? And I was just like, tyrants. It's just perfect. No, it's perfect. Thank you. And your photographs for your cover art. I mean, thank God for JC. So good. Thank you. Thank you. So good. No, that's the thing. Like, you are a model. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> we, we shot for 10 hours that day, and I got one good photo. Where's, like, I, do you guys keep your shooting places secret? Or is it, no, like, no. like, do you like to shoot in studios over? I'm kind of in a studio era okay. right now. Um, but mainly, just, <laughs> if I shoot in a studio, then I'm, like, then I can just, like, buy and return clothes. It, absolutely. I'm not wearing it outside, so. <laughs> it's I just tried it on. Literally, literally. I so, tried it on. I didn't like it. Exactly. I took a picture in it, yeah, but I didn't like it. the tags were on. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, all those outfits for the, the cover shoot, they went right on back. See yeah. you later. Yeah, well, how much, that was expensive shit that you <laughs> oh, took pictures with. I'm like, one day, either the IRS is going to be like, why are you buying and returning so much? Or I'm just going to get kicked out of those stores. Yeah, they're, they're like, not going to let me shop anymore. Gonna I'm going to be like, like Jen Shaw flag. at Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, yeah, out. red flag. Can't come in here literally. anymore. No, for literally. Sure. But it's fine. But no, yeah, if anyone ever like, DMs me and is like, where is this? Like, let me know. I send them. I'll send you the studio link. I'll send you what street corner it's on. I don't care. I love We're it. We're all in this together. We're all I just know. trying to create. I know. You're the sweetest. And like, if you go shoot at the exact same spot that I shot out, it's like, you're not going to get the same exact shot. Because, Absolutely. you know, it's just like, we all have our own vision for it. No, it's totally different. Same with podcasting. I feel totally. like it's, you know, it's this, but it's not a bubble, but it kind of is where yeah. you're kind of pulling from the same people and the right. same Right. And you're thing. talking about like, if you're in like pop culture, you're talking about yes. the same things. And but everyone brings their own flair to it, their own totally. personality. And it's just different. hundred so percent. It, it and doesn't I think matter. That was another reason why I started so late is I just, JC and Chelsea were the only ones that I knew that had yeah. podcasts and I just didn't want to like take their thing. Same way as like Tessa, like create an app. I'm like, I'm not going to create a photo app. It's yeah. just like, you know, I, I like my friends to like have their thing. And then as I got more, more popular, I was like, okay, it's like having a YouTube channel. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like, it's not one person's thing. They don't own like the podcast space exactly. as now. Like I don't like, I would hope if someone like in my friend group wanted to start one, I would like give them tips, tell them to what equipment to get or, you know, buckle up. It's hard. Like <laughs> literally what's been the, like the one thing that you didn't see coming with podcasting. Oh my gosh. I think just the, in a, in a good way, like I didn't see that I've been doing Instagram literally since I was 15 yeah. and I've never had like as much as like a parasocial relationship with uh -huh. my audience as I do now because before it was just like me taking pretty photos. Like I'm not like a TikToker. I was never like posting story time, talking yeah. or anything. And so now I do really feel like I have like a connection with my audience, which is obviously great, but it is a lot more work than I thought. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It is interesting. I think podcasting is one of the most vulnerable oh, totally. forms of 
content that you can create yeah because you really are putting your whole stuff out there for people to critique and yeah. you're talking about sometimes really personal shit uh-huh. and people can listen to it and that's what's so crazy is two people can listen to the same episode and have completely different totally. thoughts on it totally and do you feel like one thing that i really salute you for that i like that i feel like podcasting is a small bubble yeah but podcasters who can do solo episodes is one tenth of that bubble because guess what it's so much easier to sit on a couch have a conversation especially if you like like jason chelsea like your best friends you sit down on the couch you chat right it's so much you get almost more like vulnerable when you're by yourself because you're like especially i i'm trying to be better at filming all mine but sometimes i'm just like in in my dark room in my living room yeah lights off in my sweat bundled in a blanket all of a sudden and then i'm listening and back to it while editing it and i'm like i'm like i can't post this like i'm really going i'm putting too much out there once again my ex is probably gonna listen and then <laughs> really though it's crazy really though, solos are probably one of the hardest things yeah and not only that but have you ever had a moment where after you record you're like that was fucking stupid why I, oh i'm not sharing that like 100 i'm like i'm not posting that there's only been one episode where i've actually recorded it re-recorded yeah it. I was and like, then yeah. it's a whole other hour of you yeah. recording no yeah. solos are solos are hard it's hard but do you feel like it has like made you like connect with yourself a little bit better no it's therapeutic yeah it for is. sure but there's definitely times where i'm speaking and i'm like wait i sound like an idiot yeah yeah <laughs> wait i'm actually dumb i've learned like a i am dumb yeah, and, i'm dumb as rocks <laughs> and like i don't care i'm like if you listen to me and you think i'm dumb or you think i'm rambling or maybe some episodes i'm tired so i say like more often yeah i'm like i signed up to do this and i a podcast is only going to be successful if you're just 100% genuine. Absolutely. And I learned that the hard way. Like when I first was doing episode, I would like edit out like, I would edit out um, I would edit out if I took too long of a pause. I'm just like, no one wants this like manufactured no. words together episode. No. It's like, I'm just going to be who I am, say what I want. And guess what? You don't have to listen to it. No. You don't have to real. get on. Like, so don't leave a bad review. But you have great reviews. Are you kidding? I I bully people into doing a good one. No, I got fucked. Okay, really? I got Why? Fucked. I when I first started the podcast because I was I was an influencer. I was in content. Yeah. I was no. I was a little mother just hanging I out in my basement with a podcast mic, and so all my reviews were like friends and family. So I had like a five star, right? Right, right. And then um, I had Amy Scala, Rachel Parcell, yeah. Pink Peony's little sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm close with them, and she came on, and we were just doing what we're doing now. But it was my first guest where I feel like we got you know a little. A little crude, a uh, little uh, too like yeah, yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We just like really let our guard down. Yeah. People didn't like it. Oh no. And she is she had such a bigger following than me. And so all of those people that follow her left reviews. Yeah. I went from a five star to a four point one. Oh, no, I was gonna say four point one having, Ty. having guests on, <gasps> it's like the and the their audience then comes to listen to it. Those are the only people that leave negative reviews. But yeah, no. here's what I will say about negative reviews. Even when people go to a, re- a review section and like read a b- bad review, even if they might agree with it, it's like, think about going to a restaurant, listening to a show, whatever. It could be the worst show I've ever seen in my entire life. It could be the worst restaurant. A rat came out on my plate and I wouldn't <laughs> download the Yelp app and leave a negative review. The type of people time. that leave negative, rev- negative reviews or that go on Reddit or do anything like talk online about people are the lowest form of people on earth. I don't care about your opinion. So why would I care about the two words that you listened to me for 30 minutes and you left this review that whatever you said, you think my voice is annoying or this, whatever, who cares? And why would I focus on that one when I've got 900 other amazing ones that are so positive and so kind? Truly. No, I I need that. I need to save that audio clip and just like play it every single time I get in my head because it's like, ew, no. Why do I care? Like, I don't care. Like, you're a loser. And obviously, like, yeah, you, it's easy to say that. And like, sometimes I'll I'll get one negative one. I'll just like, it's not even like if it's negative, it'll be like something that I already maybe was thinking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I don't know. Like, I used to get bullied so much about my voice and whatever. And so that was my biggest thing about starting the podcast. I was like, I'm so, I like, no one likes to listen to their own voice. It's like nails on a chalkboard. But honestly, it's been the most healing thing for me. Now I'm like, I don't care about my voice. I don't care. Like, I I fucking love your voice, by the way. I was going to say, way more people, like, now compliment it than go against it. So I don't know. No, the way you talk, it's. It's my favorite. It's, been, it's a little, it could be a little better right it's now. It's my favorite. But. Your sense of humor, everything. Oh my gosh. I love you. it. I thank absolutely you. love it. Um, okay. A few more questions. Do you feel like you are in your happiest phase of life right now? 
Or are you in a spot where you're like, mm, things could be better? Ooh, good question. Because you are Mr. Travel Man. You're, uh, from the outside looking in, yeah. you look like you're living your best life. Wow, wow, yeah. No, I definitely am a good faker, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, 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 am in, I am in a good area. Um, I think, honestly, like, I just got back from Guatemala a few weeks ago. And your videos, I was done. Oh, my gosh, thank you. It, it was honestly, like, there was a lot of drama that happened with it. It was kind of shocking, but it was a really like healing trip for my, just like my soul. Like I didn't like had that much time with my best friend in a while. And I don't know. It was like one of the first trips I've been on in a while where I wasn't working. Yeah. And so it was just like so much fun. And I feel like that really did put me in like a better space. I feel like I am in a good headspace, like with like my friends and all of that. Like I now am no longer like depressed over my ex or like anything in that regard. But I think where I'm at right now, the things that like keep me up at night and that like stress me out are just like, I feel like my voice is getting worse. Sorry guys. I'm like, is he going to cry? No, it sounds like I'm (laughs) going to cry, but I'm not, I promise. I promise I'm not going to cry. It's literally my voice is like giving out. Um, It's like, I mean, I guess for lack of a better word, like finances and like business and like, like I, it's cute when you're 15, 17, 22 to be like an influencer and yeah. going around traveling and, you know, it, you're like, making a couple thousand dollars here and there. Exactly. Yeah. Like now it's like, I just don't like the inconsistency yes. of like this career of yes. being in, in, in entertainment at all. I'm sure actors struggle with it. Podcasters, like photographers, everyone. And I just, now I'm at a point in my life where like, I don't like that inconsistency because now everyone else in my life who. I used to be the the richest one, you know, like yeah. when I was 22, I was making a bank yeah, on, like, you know, doing ya. all this shit. And all my other friends are like getting out of college or baristas yeah. or whatever. They're driving the Honda Civic from yeah. 1999. And now I'm seeing all my friends, you know, they've, they've been out of college for years. They've like worked their way up at their job. They've got amazing health benefits and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm still working paycheck to paycheck. Like yeah. it's, and it, they're good paychecks. Like I'm not like complaining. It just is the inconsistency of the entertainment industry and of being an influencer. And I mean, life is expensive. Like I, I just turned 27 last year. So I got kicked off my parents' insurance and I'm like, Oh, now I have to pay $700 a month. No, it's, it's a scam. It's insane it's a scam that alone i'm like sign me up i'm going to corporate america nine to five put a put give me a suit. i'm working at starbucks now. literally <laughs> literally so i don't know those are the things that now i feel like stress me out just because i'm like i'm getting old i'm like if we're gonna yeah. be th- i never would have thought like i'm like going into 30 a single no kids and like okay I'm, you're and 28 I'm, you're not even 28 I know, yet but, uh, I, like saying, to, I like to round 30. up i like to round up but you know what i mean like no for sure growing up mormon and in utah I always just thought like by this point in my life, I'd be married yeah, and I would have kids and I'd be like, so like settled and I don't home or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm in the same place in my life as I was when I was 21. Yeah. Doing the same job, same city, same, like I'm like still in a studio apartment. I'm just like, what? And so I don't know. That's what stresses me out. But well, definitely from the outside, it looks like you are killing. You do a lot of uh, brand deals with alcohol. <laughs> 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 yes, I do. I am a booze hound. My friends call me tequila. I love it. I love it. And that was one. Oh, I meant to say that with the review thing. Like that was one of the things that I, on the podcast, I literally just share everything. I talk about yeah. like, my feral rat story times, yeah. all the things. And all, I'm very like candid about like, I mean, obviously drinking is not great for you, you know, yeah, no. but so I'll be like, oh, like I probably shouldn't drink this weekend. And then I would like end up drinking. Yeah. And I got a negative re- review one time and they were like, um, he's an alcoholic. Like he <laughs> literally is constantly, oh, my glass is like fogging up. Like, um, they're like, he's always talking about how he wants to stop drinking, but then he goes out and drinks all weekend or whatever. And I was like, okay, whoa. I was just like, A, being funny, exaggerating yeah. and like venting to my girls what yeah. I thought. Don't judge me. But I don't know. So I, that was the one thing with the podcast where I'm like, not pulled back. I still say it, but it is a weird thing of like you, you're basically like a comedian. You want to like exaggerate. You want to, you know, say a story time or whatever and camp it up. And then some people take you a little too literally. So literally. And you're like, it's not that serious. We're good. I'm not an alcoholic. Don't worry about me. I'll let you know. Uh, Yeah. No, but I do work with alcohol brands a lot. 
No. I mean, hey, they got the money. So. No, and have, I like to drink. A lot so. of money. Yeah. Where were you just barely? You went to. I was in Aspen, Aspen. with St. Germain. And then didn't you go somewhere else too, right? Just recently? So I was in Aspen. Then I got back for five hours. Then I flew to Guatemala. Okay. And then I got back and I went to Napa. Okay. And okay. then I got back and I went to Arizona. Yeah. Just, and then I go to Puerto Vallarta on Friday. <laughs> what is Puerto Vallarta? Just a trip for fun or? Yeah, just another friend's birthday. So I will be drinking a lot. Okay. <laughs> And we love that for you. Margaritas, I'm ready. Is tequila your favorite? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you're different on different alcohols? Yeah. Because I've heard, I, I'm not like an avid drinker. Like if yeah. I go to a bar, I'm literally Googling like what to really? get because I don't know anything. That's so I know funny. nothing. But I've heard that like tequila is like the fun one. Tequila is the fun one and it's also the healthiest for you. Love. Which we love I a mean, health yeah, queen. Yeah. I'm a health queen. What can I say? <laughs> um, I only promote health things on my <laughs> podcast. Um, yeah, no, it's the best one for you. And yeah, it's just the funnest. I feel like vodka is just literally like you might as well drink like Nyquil. Like it's like just yeah, it tastes like sleep. poison. Yeah. And like darker liquors, like whiskey and stuff, I feel like make me more like emotional. Oh, okay. But it's more of the depressing alcohol. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like someone brings up something, you know, if I'm drinking a whiskey, you bring up my childhood. Woo, we'd be having a different conversation. <laughs> I don't know. Bawling by the end. Literally. Okay. Well, I love that. Last question before we take out trash. Okay. What would you tell your 16 year old self if you could? Oh my gosh. Don't shave your head when you're 18. <gasps> I'm just kidding. Um, no, because then you got curly hair. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. You're right. No, the, it, everything the happens came. for a reason. True, true, true. Oh my gosh. What would I say to 16 year old little Ty? I would honestly say start earlier, like just with, I, I always knew I wanted to like be in the entertainment space. I always, like I was in dance, I was in school plays and whatever. And as I got older and the bullying got more, like I felt like I really retracted. It took me a while. It took me until after I came out to like really like blossom into like who I am and like yeah. be comfortable with like fashion and dressing crazy. And, you know, I wish I would have, you know, kept with, with my acting and do acting classes and dance and all of these things. I mean, then I could have been a freaking TikToker. Look at no, me now. really though. Could have been Addison Ray. Literally. Literally. <laughs> and then you could have been in movies. I know. Gosh, kill me. So I don't know. I feel like that's my my biggest thing. Obviously the whole like gay thing it'll be it'll get better yeah yeah the obvious don't the obvious. do anything crazy like yeah but i really feel like yeah i i hid so much of like my personality and my talents and all of that i mean thank god i started photography when i did like that yeah. literally like saved me and obviously changed the trajectory of my life but i wish i would have kept with a lot of other things as well do you ever look back and wonder what life would be like if you didn't start photography Oh my God. Like I think you. I'd be like a dentist or something. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I don't even know what I would do. Like, and that's kind of part, part of the thing that is scary with like the inconsistencies of the career. And like, that's kind of, I feel like where a lot of my anxiety comes is because I don't have a backup plan. Like, yeah. And I don't want a backup plan. And no. there, there's never going to be a backup plan because what else would I do? Like, that's just so who I am. It's like, be an entertainer, to be a creative, like in any space. If anything, I feel like I would be eventually become like a creative director of a brand or something yeah. like that. But yeah. Why don't you start your swimsuit brand like you were going to? I know. I wanted to. And then every gay person in America started a swimsuit <laughs> brand during COVID. I was like, wait, DBA was right. I shouldn't like, have done that. Oh, that wasn't that but authentic creative. Oh. I feel like one day I'll, I'll have a brand. I don't know what it would be. Clothing is so hard. I feel like even with merch, I'm sure yeah. you understand like oh, yeah. ordering like how many do in t different sizes and fits. And it's like ev everyone's body is different. So it's, it's like if it looks good on me, it's not going to fit good on everyone else. So I don't know. But one day I'll have a brand. Who knows? Mm, but I'm also just want to marry someone rich. That too. That yeah. too. But you could start a tequila brand. That's already that's already on the uh, list. Okay, we love it. Manifest. Tequila, tequila. I love it. I, love I just it. need five hundred grand. Five, again, rich husband. Where <laughs> are you at? Where, where are you at? at? Where are you at? Are you on dating apps? No. No. So how do you meet men? I don't. That's why I haven't oh, <laughs> I've okay. dated someone since okay. I was twenty two. <laughs> okay, so get on the dating app. I know. I just. Uh, I I would never want to like. I feel like my thing with dating apps is. You're automatically, and I have a, a ton of my friends met their husbands, boyfriends off of dating apps. So like, don't listen to me. This is like the biggest <laughs> pessimist coming on and like ruining it for everyone. But say you like come across someone on Instagram, you're already going to have like predetermined thoughts about like how they sound, how they yeah. act, how yeah. they whatever, just about how they like present themselves yeah. based off their clothing or anything. 
And so no matter if the person shows up and is literally so hot, so nice, whatever, it's just going to be different than what you imagined. And so I feel like that's how I feel with dating apps is like, they're going to see me and like, yeah, I'll post some cute photos, whatever. They'll just get an idea of like how I'm going to sound, how I'm going to act, how I'm gonna whatever. They're going to stalk you. And then I'm going to show up and they're going to be like, this guy won't shut up. <laughs> This guy's so annoying. This guy, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's my inner saboteur. No. No, because even if they they look at the pictures, then they're going to look you up. They're going to see your podcast. They're going to listen. And, and then they're never going to message no, me back. <laughs> they're going to love. They're going to love. Do you feel like you need somebody like the complete opposite of you? Or do you want someone with your energy? Yeah, I don't know. I definitely need someone who can like keep up with my banter, but I don't want someone who is going to try and like over talk me. Yeah. You're like, I I need the spotlight. Yeah, like I feel like my last two exes were maybe a little too personality too loud for me yeah yeah and i think that's where we like clashed no my husband's the complete opposite of me. really he's literally so quiet doesn't speak oh <laughs> and you're like i love it just listen I'm to me like, laugh no literally he just listens to me all day that's sometimes so i'm funny. like can you add to the story like, right, like, right 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 i'm like telling the whole story to everybody and then he starts and he's like, like you're doing it wrong <laughs> literally i'm like okay shut up i'll keep going that's so funny yeah no so maybe you need someone just yeah really quiet yeah i don't really have like a type or like a like something specific that I'm looking for. I'm a huge, like, not like energy person, like give me a crystal and like yeah. whatever. It's just like, I can tell immediately if I'm going to like get it. along with someone or if I, like even if like a girl comes up to me at a bar, I'm immediately like, I either want to be a best friend or literally shut up, like stop talking <laughs> to me. Like I can just tell. No. And so I feel like that's how I am with boys. I don't know. I'm just like, it'll happen read, when it happens. Read the room. Well, I think you should get on. What's the dating app for like famous people? Araya? Raya. Raya. I've been on it before, but I'm like, it's like expensive, like $40 a month. Shut up. I'm like, unless you're going on a date like every week and they're paying for it. Yeah. I don't want to be on it. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. Also, I'm like, wait, so you think you're cool enough to be on Raya? I have the ick. I have <laughs> yes. the ick. If you are on Raya, which yes. I was, so it's like, yeah. they probably thought the same thing, but it's like, if you think you're cool enough to be on Raya, where you have to spend all this money to be on it, <laughs> goodbye. Like you think I want somebody. If I was gonna do, I'm like, I'd want to meet someone on like Tinder, like one that like is like whatever. That's how I met my husband. That's kind of like a pick me energy, but yeah, it's like I'm like I want to be different. I I don't go on Raya. I'm I'm an influencer, but I don't go on Raya. I go on Tinder. Like I just want a real (laughs) person. Like I want someone with no Instagram. Yeah, like I read books. I (sighs) would you be shocked? I mean, I guess like you got married so young and it's different, but like in my head ideally i'm like okay yeah it'd be great to have someone not on instagram like i'm yeah. so on instagram whatever but then also i'm like is that not a red flag like it's 2024 if you're gonna be a hot 30 year old gay guy and we have like why don't you have instagram are you a serial killer like what are you hiding exactly what are you hiding but well, you can't win no i met this girl at the gym i wonder if she's listening to this gorgeous yeah. like the most gorgeous human i've ever seen like I, I told her I hate her because she's so pretty. <laughs> You're like, I punched her in the face. No, I was like, no, why are you so perfect looking? Oh, like, gosh. I hate you. And she's like, oh, let's get each other's number. And I'm like, that's weird. Like, you don't have Instagram. She's like, she's like, no, I don't have Instagram. And I'm like, no. So you're a freak. No, you're a freak. And like all your friends hate you. Like something's wrong with you. Had you. To get, you had to delete your profile because something happened. Like you stole someone's identity. Like uh-huh. why? And you're going to do mine next. Like what? You want my number? Of course I gave it to her and like we're totally going to hang out. But like. I, oh my gosh. <laughs> but that, I, was, I was shook. That's crazy. I was shook. That's my other thing. It's like when uh, when people do like make a move and like either like DM me or like come up to me at a bar or whatever, blah, blah. Like I just have an instant panic where I'm like, you hate me. Like why are you talking <laughs> to me? Like this is weird. Like. What's I don't happening? know. So even if someone did try and make a move and like try and ask me out, it I'm very uncomfortable about it. So you're just self self sabotaging. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, it takes me a while. Okay. Okay. Well, if I if any like I mean I the gay pool in Utah is really small yeah. too. So yeah. like I don't. And have, apparently they're not monogamous. No, so yeah, they're not monogamous. If so you find a monogamous hottie, I'll send them your way. Make some money. I'll send them your way. A rich one. Is there an age preference? Not really. Like, I mean, I'm not dating someone, like, younger than me. Okay. Um, yeah, you. I mean, like, I would date someone, like, like 26. Or, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I would date someone, like, a year younger than me, but up to... Would you date, like, a 60-year-old? No. Okay. But my last ex was 15 years older than me. 15's nothing. So, yeah. Do, like, like 45. Is that 15 years? That's almost. That's seventeen years. Oh my gosh! I'm like, how old is my ex now? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's well, like, he's getting up there. He is. Um, yeah, no, I would date someone older for sure. But once again, I'm like, my inner saboteur is like, is that a red flag? Like, why are you 45 and you've never been married? True. But that's like me because I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting up there. Yeah. And People do you, do you want kids? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think just one. Just one. Yeah. I used to thought I wanted a lot, but the world is so expensive now. And like, I just want to, I don't ever want to feel like I, and this is maybe like not good to admit when you're saying you are having kids because you're going to have to give up so much. But like, I don't want to ever like regret having a kid and like feeling like I had to like give up so much of my life because I do love my life. I love to travel. I love to do all these things. And like, I want to just bring my kid into my life and like grow together. I don't want to feel like I like, gave everything up when I had kids. No, you don't want to completely lose yeah. that part of yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you want to go to Bora Bora for spring break? Guess what? You don't get a little brother. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, really though. Mm, life's expensive. Yeah, you buddy. don't want like a little minivan. You want to ride around in <laughs> G Wagon? Sorry. You're the only kid. Like that's how life's going to be. But that's I feel like it's all be. about like, I mean, maybe also because I do come from such a big family. I had True. six siblings and I'm, what did that get me? I'm not close with them. I don't talk to them. Yeah. We weren't friends growing up. So it's like, Okay, so my parents were just poor for nothing. Like, it's not like we're like we're not like the Brady Bunch, so we're all so close, and it was so worth it. And, oh, everyone needs siblings, and yeah. I don't know. Like, I see that. Like for your other Thanksgiving people, table, you want it to be full. Oh yeah, no, no, we're I, going to we're going to Olive Garden for yeah. things, even dinner. Yeah, Sorry. no, yeah, no, I see that. I'm like in that place where I have three kids. I'm like, do I want more? I but- know. I feel like you're my version of me talking about drinking too much is you talking about your pregnancy. <laughs> Literally, I feel like every episode you're like. Either A, am I pregnant or not? <laughs> and two, do I want another kid or not? Every episode is different. You're I, like, don't I have to have one. My know. family's not complete. I don't know. Like it's back and forth, back and forth, back yeah. and forth. But it goes back to me being like, okay, first of all, my life's really good right now. I can have whatever car yeah. I want. Like three kids. I don't need like a massive yeah, three kids. It's too much. No, it's too much. You're going to be so poor it's your whole too life. Much. You're I'm going to be so poor. I'm you're going to be, s- be driving around like, in a fifth I wheel. Can't. Like you can't. I can't. No, but can't. if you want it, if you want one, I will support it. No, but like I literally go back and forth every day because <sighs> I think about these things. I'm like, like coming here and doing this yeah. with three kids was already stressful. Add another one. Yeah. Well, it's like trying to, th- I'm thinking about like being on a plane. If you can't all fit in one row, it's like, you're getting too big. No, it's crazy. And we're already at that point. Right. Like we're a fucking circus. We That's had, crazy. we had two strollers. We had a double stroller. We had our little Duna, which is like a car seat stroller. I'm like, what is life? I literally blinked and I was 18 and now I have three children. Yeah. No. They're all close in age. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Literally five, three and a baby. Yeah. So. Cause I, I feel like like how my mom did it. Like we had five right away or yeah. Five right away. And then my little sister is like a six caboose. years younger. Okay. So I feel like if you were to do four, it's like I, that's easier, yeah. but yeah, no, it's a lot. I don't know. I don't know. But then again, some people say like, just knock them all out while you're. But the people who say that, I'm like, do you have a life? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you have and anything just, else? Just knock them all out of what? My like, vagina? <laughs> like, like, it's not just like, oh, like, I'll just go pick up another one. <laughs> like, no, pregnancy, Ty, oh it gosh. is. I can't even imagine. Literally, every, it takes every part of you. It takes every part of you. You look completely different. Yeah. I'm a materialistic. I'm a vain person. When nothing fits me, I'm ugly and Mm-mm. fat and miserable. Mm-mm. And I'm willingly going to do that again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I can't sacrifice myself for that. Sorry. I want a kid. I mean, thank God I don't have to like carry it, but. <laughs> and push it out. Oh my God, I can't. Or get it cut out of you. It's crazy. Literally jail. I was in the sister. I was in the room when my sister had her first kid. And I Did was Did you take like, the pictures? Yeah, but I was in there to take photos and like video. And then she thought she was going to get an epidural. And then she, at the last minute, cut it. <gasps> and so, I mean, just like screaming and like yelling at her husband like fuck you and and i'm like am i supposed to be recording this or not and like your full cooter is out like i'm very uncomfortable i mean a a beautiful process i'm seeing everything for the first time wait when no you oh i thought you said you are i'm like mama you didn't watch no as as a brother i don't know if i would want to see my sister's yeah it was a lot i mean i mean you you're fully aware when that's happening that ain't a vagina. No, it, it doesn't look is. like it a is. Uh, it is a portal to the underworld. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's a portal. It looks like a black. I mean, more a portal to heaven. Obviously. A portal to heaven, but some sweet, watermelon sweet is just popping out of it. You, it's, no, crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And crazy. it's just like a, I don't know, like a level of pain that like you don't normally see anyone in, obviously. Because even it's, if someone it's like, like death. If someone broke their leg, if someone yeah. whatever, and you you were there and you saw it, like obviously it'd be hurtful and they'd be crying. Yeah. But pregnancy is like a different level of pain. No, I wish I would have been a fly on the wall watching you. Watch oh my gosh. No, me in the corner birth. with a camera like, am I supposed <laughs> to be taking photos of this? Like, I feel really weird. Oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. Okay, well that was a good dumpster deep dive time. Yes. I love talking with you. Thank you, thank but you. But we're not done. Because okay. now we need to take out trash of the week. Okay, I'm ready. Personal Trash is brought to you by Dressed in Lala. 
Lala is a fashion brand that empowers you to wear whatever the F you want. I'm obsessed with the brand. If you know, you know, it literally has the funnest pieces. I am wearing it right now. And I've currently been wearing it every single day I've been on this trip. The colors, the patterns, the fits are so different and cool and so unique. If you're looking to add some magic to your wardrobe, you need to check them out. Use code WEEKLYTRASH for 10% off your order at dressedinlala.com. And you had a week. You were just in Arizona filming an engagement. Did you film it or just like take pictures? I just took photos. Took photos. I've never been so shook in my life. I was like so nervous. I was like shaking because it's like my best friend and like... I don't know. I knew it was going to be on like page six. And like, so I'm just like, I'm, I'm literally in a bush. And she didn't know I was going to Arizona at all. So I'm like in a bush with this like huge paparazzi lens. Also right before her fiance was like, oh, they don't allow professional photographers. So just stay like low key. I'm like, I'm in a bush with a, with a $5,000 camera that is t- two feet long. Like there's, <gasps> just, there's no low key. Just be low key, Ty. So then I'm also trying not to get caught. It was, it was a lot, but it was gorgeous. But you got him. After got him, she got said yes, shots. did you like pop out and go like, yeah, surprise? No, like, ha- like halfway through she was like, is that Ty? Like, what is happening? Because then it kind of came out of the bushes. Once he was yeah. like not, once he did the ring moment, I was yeah. like, if she sees a photographer, she's not going to care. Yeah. But yeah, it was funny. Did you guys party after? Did you do anything fun? Oh, I mean, not right after. Because okay. I was like, I'll let you have your moment. Like, go. Okay, yeah. But know, like go text to dinner me immediately when you're done. But then obviously it was her birthday weekend. So then all of her friends came into town. And I mean, why do you think my Ooh. voice is gone? It just lived it up. Yeah. And then you got an IV. Do you... Go to like a certain place for an IV or do you have like so my, an on-call nurse? No. Yeah. She came to my house this morning. <laughs> her name's Kylie. Her brand's name is like Moduela. And yeah, it's just like at home, like IV. She's the best. Did it's you, Tessa's sister-in-law. Okay. Perfect. Give her the shout out. Yeah. yeah she's the best. No, I got an IV, but like I was telling you, I was like, does this do anything? I'm like, like that's because you don't drink. I'm like. I'd feel the same. When you're drinking, it helps a lot. Your body's just Literally, <laughs> as I got it, she was like halfway through. She's like, I think your voice already sounds better. I'm like, it does. <laughs> I feel alive. I feel yeah. alive. So what time did you fly in last night? I got home at like six. Okay, PM. not bad. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Came home, had a pizza hut. Because I literally like did not eat very much this weekend. Like when we're like partying, I mean, it's just like you're eating to survive, you know? I have to have food. That's what I was telling you. I prefer to eat calories instead of yeah. drinking them. yeah, yeah. Like I could never, I would uh, die. My thing is like, I won't, I won't eat like while I'm partying, but then like when I get home, I'm like Pizza Hut, McDonald's. You need the carbs, Big you Mac. need the fats. Yeah, exactly. So you need everything. You need everything. What else happened this week? Oh my gosh. What else happened this week? Do you watch shows? Like what do you? Oh, everything. Everything, everything? under the sun. Yeah. Everything. You're uh, big. Are, are you watching Love is Blind? Oh, uh, what do you mean? I need it into my veins <laughs> immediately. I need the finale. That, are you caught up? No. Oh my gosh. I know, which is so unfortunate because yeah. I would love to go off on I it. Know, I know, I know, because I have so many thoughts. I have I'm literally only at the part where um they just got to their little honeymoon oh, thing. Oh uh, thing. No. No, I'm so behind. You gotta get on it. I was gonna watch on the airplane on the right here. Yeah. But anytime I get a free moment, I'm trying to take a nap. No, I heard that on your episode. I'm trying yeah. to take a nap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But now I'm like regretting my decision because yeah. Well maybe tonight. I'll get all up. Yeah. Are you watching The Bachelor? Yes, so I'm getting caught up on that. I think maybe it, or if you're caught up, you I'm might all be. Caught up. I think Actually, I, I didn't few, watch last night. I have last a few episodes was... behind, I think, but I am. Oh, you want to know my type? Is it Joey? Joey. Oh, oh, he is Prince Charming. My panties are soaked. <laughs> I love him, and he's I so love him. sweet, and he's so good with words. He's so reassuring and kind oh. and gorgeous and sexy. It almost is like. Did he get talked through how to handle being The Bachelor or is he genuinely this perfect? When he was crying when they were in Spain and he was just like, I don't know, like at this process. Like I'm oh, always I, trying to be the best and I don't know. I'm not perfect. I don't know. And, he, and he was saying he's sometimes kind of shy. Yeah. Like he's not this like loud personality. That's what I need. No, it was it was your man. Oh Go get God. your man. No, literally. I was texting my friends. I was like, I think I'm in love. They're like, just show your shot. Send him a DM. I'm like, he's probably engaged. Do so, it anyways. So do from, it the, anyways. from the ending, it doesn't do look like, uh, yeah, no. I don't know. Well, I always read the spoilers. So like, oh, really? I know what okay. happens. I don't know the spoilers, but I feel like they spoil it within the, they're like coming up later this season. And I'm like, well, you just showed the whole well, season. And everyone's crying. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's yeah, not very nice. But I can't wait. This is like the best season in a while. I'm not like a huge Bachelor watcher. I stopped but watching after Chris Harrison left. It kind of lost its fire. Yeah. And I was like, mm. I probably only watched like two or three seasons total. Really? 
but I'm such a follower. Like if people are talking about it on TikTok, I'm like, I gotta be filled in. Yeah, I can't be left out. So I no, watch it. He's perfect. So the cute. bachelor should do why don't they do gay bachelor? So they kind of tried one. Oh my god, this oh, is hilarious. Really? How much oh time gosh. do we got? Oh my gosh, so, let's do it. So they tried this one on Logo TV, which is like where Drag Race started. Okay. And it was called Finding Prince Charming. And it, <laughs> he was one of the first people I went on a date with when I moved to LA. Shut up. <laughs> and so I watched the show. I like binged it all. And then I was like, he's hot, but I, I can't remember if he ended up with someone or not. And so I just like went on his Instagram and yeah, like shoot, sent him a DM, shoot, shot my shot. shot. I was literally like 21. He was like, I don't even know how old. He probably lied about his age, but like full silver fox, like definitely in his 40s. Oh, like, oh, okay. And I was literally like 21. I was like, what? So we like went on a day or two, but honestly, the worst day I've ever been on, he, me thinking I'm too loud, like that is my biggest pet peeve. That's my trigger. Like if someone, yeah. if someone's like, oh, like you're being kind of loud. Oh my God. Like no. I will punch you in the no, face and I will it. never speak to you again. Guess what? <laughs> oh, I'm being too loud. I'm never speaking to you again. As loud as possible. Literally. And we were at the Chateau Marmont and we were like on this date or whatever. And yeah, we were having this big story and he was trying to tell me that I like wasn't a good photographer because I didn't know this like big photographer's name that he was talking about. He was like, he was like, how do you know, how are you not, or what was he saying? He was like, you can't consider yourself like in the industry if you don't know like your competitors. I'm like, they're not my competitors. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't know. And then he was like, oh, like you're being really loud. Can you lower your voice? And I was like, check, literally check. And you're paying for it. And I'm leaving. Anyways, for real, you can't do a gay bachelor because everyone would just sleep with each other. (laughs) And that's what's going to happen. If you put tw- if you put 20 boys in a that's house true. together, like, that's sorry, true. let's talk about monogamy. All beautiful men. Too, yeah. Yeah. That are single so, wanting love. <laughs> yeah. So I think like they, they've now done a few different ones where like kind of like Love Islandy, I feel like is a better yeah. route. Yeah. Because it's like, OK, we'll put 20 boys in a house. If you end up together. Great. If not, see you later. What was that one show called? Um, are you the one? Did you ever watch that on? No, MTV? I don't think so. It's like so old. Yeah, I haven't but seen it. But these people would like get together in this house and they'd have to figure out who the scientists decided who was like. Scientists? Yeah, they got scientists involved. Oh, wow. They did. I mean, they're probably like psychological. Yeah, what's yeah. The word? Psychiatrists. Yeah, yeah. They like did a whole scan on who they were, their personalities. Oh my and then they like tried to match them the best as possible. Right. And then they all put them in the house and they have to figure out who their perfect matches are they the one and then they go into this like room and it this like thing scans their faces and says if they're the match or not and then if they're the match then they get to go off and like have like a little honeymoon thing yeah that show could be good with a bunch of gay guys yeah yeah let's bring back mtv hit us up no let's do it i no. would you ever go on a dating show or any reality TV? Oh, I would love to do reality TV. No, you would be amazing. But I don't know if I would do a dating show. No? Because I'm like, once again, I don't need America seeing how I kiss. <laughs> right? I mean, I think I'm a great kisser, but I don't need you to see. Because guess what? I might be getting in there a little too much. I don't need the double chain coming out. No, watching Joey kiss too, I'm like, you look like a good kisser. No. I'm in love. And I actually, like, <laughs> I don't know if I can finish the season because, like, I literally have been in love with him. I think you'll be heartbroken. And it's really hard. It's really hard for me. But I'm I mean, sorry. the other guy came out as gay, so maybe he will. No, Colton. Mm-hmm. Have you ever like ran into him in like uh-uh. the circles? We have like mutual friends, but I've never run into him now. Mm. Have what's been like your meanest celebrity encounter? Ooh, meanest. Mm. Do you feel like you have a lot of celebrity encounters? Yeah, I have a lot of celebrity here? encounters. Um, like you freaking were at a party with Justin Bieber. Like Yeah, Justin Bieber, just Jay Z, Beyonce. Like, slay. Yeah, wow. That was honestly a peak for me. I was so, oh my gosh, maybe I do sound like an alcoholic. I was so hammered. I mean, okay, to keep it, it was a Casamigos Halloween party. Yeah, of course I'm hammered. it's meant for alcohol. Justin Bieber's there. I'm basically naked in my costume. I'm Tarzan. I'm in this like 40 inch long wig. I'm yes. like, of course this is the situation in which Justin Bieber's dancing next to me. Like, yeah. could I have a t-shirt on? Maybe pants so I could maybe ask for a selfie? Like, I'm not going to go up to you. No, Sorry. but your body's banging. You should have. No, no. I was literally basically naked. It was so <laughs> shocking. But anyways, what was I saying? Oh, rudest celebrity interaction. I don't know. I feel like most celebrities have been pretty nice to me. I would say honest. Oh, I, oh, I, can't, I can't say that one. Um, we can bleep out their name. Um, <laughs> Probably NeNe Leakes. Oh, really? Which is shocking because now I'm best friends with yeah. the beer man's Yeah, but, that um, is funny. And then, yeah, bleep out this name. 
so rude to me. Uh, I went to um, New York Fashion Week. Not that she's a celebrity at all. Yeah. But like when I met her, like she was to me. Like I was like, oh. I was still in high school. I was 17. It was my first New York Fashion Week. And I like went up to her at a vet or whatever. And she was so rude. No, she definitely gives off that vibe. She, yeah. She, yeah, there, yeah. 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 yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. She's definitely like an intimidating person yeah. too because yeah. she really doesn't give a flying fuck. Right, right. Like if you like her or not. But yeah, everyone else has been so nice. Like I've met so many people. Doja Cat was probably one of the nicest because I she I saw her at, I went to Beyonce's party in Paris and no, she insane. was there. Insane. And she had just shaved her head and I was just like so hot. Like this is amazing. It was like, you want me to shave... I want to shave my head now, whatever. And she was like, don't you dare. She was like, you're so gorgeous. Like, sat to me, talked to me for a while. Like, it looks like this because I shaved my head. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Thank God the curls. Yeah. Um, Yeah, everyone else has been so nice. Paris Hilton, so nice. Um, Who else? Halsey, so nice. Yeah. Like, like your life. Like, what? It's crazy. I don't know. I feel like LA is just such a small world. Like, and then you, I love it. I still love celebrities. I love pop culture, but. When you when you're here for a while, like it, you're like oh, okay, like you are actually just real people. Yeah, you're just real people. It's all kind of like a facade. Yeah, and like we were all going to the same events, whatever. I mean, not Beyonce. When I was in the same room with her, I was like, "You're actually a god. Like you're no, not real life." Truly, her new album. I goodbye. Can't wait, yee Like the the one song we have. I'm oh my like, gosh, it's so good. It's not. It's never getting. Who's old. your like number one celebrity? That I would like shit myself over yeah. Justin Bieber. Really? I would literally take a shit. He's like, like kind of like shorter than I thought he would be. That's the thing. He, I, the older he gets, the less I'm attracted to him. Yeah, yeah. But it's the sense that my entire life. Yeah. Like I had wet dreams about him when I was like 13. Like, no, I would like look up his like fake nudes no, like, when I was like 12. Same, same. No, like I was in love with him. And so to see him in the flesh would yeah. just be so crazy. It is crazy. It just like, you can't even like... I don't know. It's hard to grasp when when you're there. Like you're just like that's Justin Bieber. Like that's the person that the I've person been fawning I've, over. Like no, truly. Like I wanted to be one less lonely girl. Yeah. And now I'm here. You're right here. Yeah. Like that would be. That'd be crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's. I will say. Like, have you met a lot of celebrities? No. I met like three. I mean, I've met quite a few bachelor people. Right. 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 Like right, that right. kind of. Yeah. Celebrity. Yeah. When I say celebrity, I mean I'm like, not. But like a list celebrities, yeah. no. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, unless you actually get to talk to them, like, even if you just get, like, a photo. Like, I've had, like, a photo with Gigi Hadid, but, like, yeah. it was literally, like, she was walking off the stairs, and I was like, can I get a photo? Take a photo, and then yeah. she walked away. And so it's like, I wouldn't say I met her, yeah. but, like, when you actually get to, like, talk to a celebrity, it's crazy. You're just, like, looking at their Like, face, you're just like, like, this is so weird. But even with the Justin Bieber thing, I'm like, it was so cool. We were, like, literally dancing at a party for hours together, but, like, I didn't, like, talk to him, you know? So it doesn't feel like, I'm like, I wouldn't say I met Justin met him, Bieber. Yeah. Well, and then you went to Golden Globes, right? Was it? Golden? I went to the Golden Globes. Like the red carpet. What was that red carpet that you went on? Was it? Which one was that? I went to the AMAs. Like I actually went into the AMAs. The Golden Globes, I went. But like the Golden Globes are interesting because they're like all those round tables. Yeah. And so half the people that like go to the Golden Globes, like all the influencers, like you're sitting in a room next door. Gotcha. Gotcha. gotcha like gotcha, it's in the same gotcha. building, but like you're not seeing, you're watching gotcha, on TV. So. Gotcha. But like just being on the carpet. Yeah. Being on the carpet is cool. That's crazy. It's like so much crazier than you would think. I'm sure it's so many like publicists being like, go here, go here. Like there's madhouse. I'm sure it's insane. Yeah. And so many cameras. And I didn't know until I went to the Golden Globes that like you just aren't realizing that like, yeah, when all these people in front of you are being interviewed, like you're in the background. (laughs) So like all my friends were sending me photos of me, like in the background (laughs) of all these celebrity interviews. And I'm just like double chin, like on my phone. Like I'm like, um, maybe move off to the side. That'd be great. (laughs) But like, there's probably nowhere you can even move off no, to not be seen. No, that's what I'm saying. Because it's like mayhem. camera, 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 camera. Yeah, and like camera, I want to like camera. stay and see the slab, so yeah. I'm not gonna go inside. Like, absolutely yeah. not. No, I love that. Okay, what else? Any other trash this week before we do trash topic? Can? <sighs> Gosh, is there anything I want to get off my chest? Anything? Anything you got to take out? Um, I'm trying to think what I. I'm like, because I know this episode is not going to come out for like two weeks. So I'm like, I know. what, what is going to be relevant, relevant in right, two weeks? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Not um, pop culture um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Basically, I just had the travel day of hell, but you know, it's fine. You're the king of that. So oh, you, like, yeah, that's what I was saying. When I was listening to your episode <laughs> about the travel day, I was like, girly, I get it. I fully understand. And you travel, like your flights are long Yeah, that you go on. Yeah. Mine Luckily, was, they've all been not too bad, but. 
Like, like Guatemala is only like four hours, five. See, that's long to me. Yeah. Yeah. If it's over an hour and a half, goodbye. Yeah, right. Like, what? I, that's longer than a movie. What's the farthest place you've been? So I was actually telling her when I was little, my dad owns a travel agency. Oh. And he was a travel agent. Oh, amazing. He did well, and then 9-11 hit, and then we were really, really poor. Gosh. But when I was little, I went to Paris. I went to Germany. Oh, wow. I went to Denmark. I went all over the place. Wow, gosh. But I haven't been anywhere since. Oh, my gosh. We got to get you out of the country. I'm a, I'm a, little, I'm a little princess. I've never been anywhere. I am dead. And I want to go places. Yeah. My husband hates flying. Really? So I'm like, who the fuck am I going to go to Paris with? I mean, I'll go. I'm like, let's go. I'll go. I'll take I want to go. Well, and I want to go with someone who knows what the fuck they're doing because yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But you learn like no one ever knows what they're doing. I know. We're all pretending. You're just faking until you make it. But I get so much anxiety traveling. Really? Like just like being in a place that's not my home. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, it's weird because I'm not a homebody, but I just get very like anxious. Interesting. You'd more Are you like more of a routine person Huge than like you'd say a homebody? Huge routine person. Yeah. Are See, you? I'm like opposite. Really? If I do the same thing for three days, I'm like, oh my gosh, kill me. <laughs> Like yeah. after, after like this month, like, I yeah. mean, you do send, you do start to crave like your routine in a sense of like, I want to be able to like go to the gym and for like sure. stuff like that. But no, I live for the the hectic craziness. The crazy, spontaneous, yeah. all over the place. Speaking of gym, what's your workout routine? No, like nothing. Ripped. No, I haven't been at the gym in two years. Like, but you went through a phase where you were like skinny, skinny, I, skinny, and now you're muscle man. So, yeah, so and then now, and then now I'm, and then now I'm like, on a chubby or phase. No, no, I promise no. you. Why do you think I'm wearing a turtle neck and a button up? No, no. What, what'd you do? What, what was? So I was, I was really skinny growing up, which is crazy because my whole family is like very overweight. Yeah, and the like, gastro they all have gastro bypass, bypass yeah. the whole thing. And me and my one sister just like didn't get that gene. We just like were really skinny. And then during COVID. I became best friends with this guy named Ash and he started training me. And like during COVID, and you couldn't was, do anything else. Yeah, no. I had no work. I wasn't doing anything. And like all gyms were closed, but like he owned his own little like warehouse thing. So I just got swole. Like, and I got like almost maybe too into it. Like when I was like at my fittest, I thought I was fat. Like I was like, I've got like love handles. I was like, you got to help me. Like we got to do more lower abs. And he's like, you're crazy. You're like, I need to lean out. And we were just working out way too long and way too hard. And then once like the world kind of opened back up, I kind of like snapped out of it. And I was like, I can't be working out from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like yeah. that, my whole life is gone. Like I need to like work and like, no, you know. No, that's crazy. So then, I don't know, I just kind of like fell out of it as like the world kind of opened back up and now I need to get back into it. But I'm not going to have it worked out in like two years. Well, you look great, Ty. Thank you. So. Thank you. Ready for this oh my gosh, look at this cute trash can. <gasps> trash topic can. I'm, okay. I'm like nervous to see what you're going to pick. Okay. Trash topic can is brought to you by Road to Baby. Did you know that one in eight people in the U.S. alone struggle with infertility and have difficulties growing their family? The team at Road to Baby understand the pain and frustration that can come with infertility, and they are there to help you navigate that often bumpy road to parenthood. Road to Baby is a surrogacy, egg, and sperm donation agency based out of San Diego, California who connects those in need with surrogates, egg donors, and sperm donors to help them grow their family. Road to Baby believes in fairly compensating those who make these dreams of parenthood come true. First-time surrogates working with Road to Baby receive a minimum of $56,000 for their incredible dedication. Egg donors are generously compensated at $10,000 per donation, and sperm donors each earn $5,000 for their first donation. If you've ever considered becoming a surrogate, egg donor, or sperm donor yourself, I encourage you to reach out to Road to Baby. You have the power to change lives and make parenthood dreams come true. And wait, there's more. If egg, surrogacy, or sperm donation isn't for you, but you know someone who might be a perfect fit, you can earn $1,000 in referrals for egg and sperm donors and $6,000 or more per surrogate referral. If you or someone you know is struggling with infertility, remember that you are not alone. The experts at Road to Baby are there to help you navigate this often challenging path to parenthood. Their experience and guidance can make all the difference in your journey. Road to Baby exists to help growing families and creating a life-lasting connection and making dreams a reality. If you're ready to take that first step or just curious to learn more about the process, schedule a free consultation with Road to Baby. Visit www.roadtobaby.com. R O A D T O B A B Y dot com. Because some of these are probably like they're so cringy. Okay. The questions. 
Dumbest thing I've ever done. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a good question for you. I feel like you have a lot. <laughs> you're like, I feel like you're really dumb. And well, you've you, done a lot of dumb every shit. Every time you post something, it's so funny. I'm like, oh, I feel my like you've gosh. Done so many it's like, things. what route do I want to go? Dumbest thing I've ever done. I've had a lot of dumb moments because I am dumb. I'm very I'm, dumb. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Okay, 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 okay. I want to. I want to be one that I like. I haven't told yet. Okay, I'm gonna think about my. Oh my gosh, my voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's rubbing off. It's rubbing off, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's contagious. Okay. Um. Oh gosh. What route do I want to go? Oh my gosh, I'm having the biggest brain fart. I'm no, like the same. dumbest thing. Okay, okay. I can't remember if I've I've, I've told the story before. So me and my best friend, Billy, okay. we're best friends from like eighth grade. We go to New York City and I don't even know if we're, we're definitely out of high school at this point, but maybe like fresh, like 18, okay. 19 babies. Okay. And we want to go see The Tonight Show. Of course. Like we want to be in the crowd, filming, whatever. Yeah. And we were so poor. We're like 18 years old, whatever. And so we stayed with her brother's friend from high school, like random girl that he was like classmates with who lived in New Jersey. Okay. So we're like, you know, 45 minute train ride outside of the city. And we're doing the math of like, you have to be to the tonight show early. Like yes. people start lining up early and you wait in this like standby line at like literally like 7 a.m. And the, basically the the first train in the morning wouldn't get us there on time. So we were like, we have to go at night. Yeah. But like we can't get like a hotel or anything. <laughs> it's February in New York City. We slept outside. No. Outside, no, you did Outside not. of the door at the Tonight Show. We slept outside. And we weren't really thinking with our brains. Like when we got off the train into oh. the city, we got there at like midnight and we were frozen. Frozen. Because we wanted to like look cute on the Tonight Show. We didn't think like, oh, maybe like pack other stuff. So literally, we go into H and M's about to close. We're in Times Square. We go to H and M. We buy literally like three coats, and we go and we sleep on the ground. I don't even think we actually even slept. Our phones were gonna die. We walked around Central Park filming videos. We were just idiots. And then like after, you know, that's fun up until like. And, but also, keep in mind, we're not twenty one. We weren't drinking nothing. Yeah, we're fully you're sober. Just in the freezing cold. And you know that's fun. We walked around for a few hours. Like it was cute. People call it New York City the city that never sleeps. People sleep. No, it, it goes to bed. It, it shuts down. If you're walking around Times Square at 2 a.m., you will be the only person there. Like, it is crazy. And yeah, then once like, you know, three, four, five o'clock rolls around, we were like, what are we doing? Like, why did we do this? But what were we going to do? Did you get on the show? Yeah. Did you get to go in? Check it out. Watch. Were you the very first people in yeah. line? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> one and two by a long. People didn't start lining up to like 9 a.m. We were like, oh, we could have taken a taxi or something in the morning. So we learned our lesson. Uh, but oh. yeah, then I've been on the Tonight Show or I've been in the crowd three times since then. I learned my lesson. Oh my gosh. One time I did it, Ariana Grande was on. She was a performer. How lucky. So insane. Like I can't even, it, that feels like so long ago. I've lived so many lives since then. What was then, the but, like, first one? I'm trying to remember who it was. Like who performed. Like you slept on the fucking floor for them. Yeah, I know. I know. And it was a big nobody burger. Like it was not worth it. I think no. it was like, no, Carrie Underwood was, was when I was on Ellen. I don't even know who. I literally think it was nobody. I oh, think it was like a basketball a player or something. Like so dumb. And then Ariana Grande was the second time it went. Incredible. Which obviously was amazing. I can't remember the, ter the third time. But then, yeah, I've been in Ellen filming with Carrie Underwood. But I don't even remember it. I have the so, worst memory ever. Do you really? Yeah, the worst. I feel like I'm really good at remembering old things, but like things that just happened come and go. Come yeah, and go, come yeah. And go. Mine's kind of all of it. Unless I have like a photo from it, I won't remember it. Oh, whenever I do like my solo lineup, I yeah. have to go through my photos of the week yeah. to figure out like, oh, what am I going to talk no. about today? Same. Like, what What did I do? Exactly, exactly. Photos People are like, everything. how's my trip? I'm like, I don't know. Let me go look through my camera roll. No, my dumbest thing I ever did actually involves Venice Beach. Shut up. Because I was, well, besides me getting a tattoo randomly for no oh! reason. Wait, where? What is it? On my ribs. Okay. okay. So I went through an era yeah. where I had just graduated high school, lived with some friends, and I was in my party. I was underage, yeah, yeah. but like drinking every night. Yeah, yeah. Getting shit faced. Love. Getting tattoos, being wild. Love. And one morning, me and my friend woke up 
And we were like, we don't have work. It was a Thursday and we didn't have work till Monday. And we were like, what if we just drove to California? Like we're broke. We have no fucking money. It sounds fun. We both ha- are driving like beat down cars yeah. that can't make it to California. Right, right. Hers was a little bit better. So we took hers and we're like, let's just do it. Like, let's just go. Let's drive nine hours yeah. to California. So we did. We drove. We get here. We have no money, no place to stay. No. So we sleep in our car parked in Venice Beach area. And then we were so terrified because we were like, there's homeless people. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. this is so sketchy. We found out we had some friends that were staying around here. So we were like, can we like sleep on your guys' hotel oh, floor? Oh uh, my gosh. So we sleep on their hotel floor. We were here for like three days. Every day we were just like having fun, partying, yeah. no money. We were just like literally smo- mooching off yeah, of everybody yeah. that we're with. We're like, Couch oh, shopping. oh, did you order French fries? Can I have some? Like whatever. Not used to taking their food. No, literally. But this is the dumbest thing we did and it could have killed us. We had to drive home and we we're like, we should leave probably the day before because we have work on Monday. Yeah. But we were like, no, let's, we want to hang out and have fun. Like everyone's hanging out. Oh we'll just gosh. leave Sunday night and drive through the night. Ty, I should be fucking dead. <laughs> Jail. I fell asleep at the wheel. I, we took turns. We took turns. Her, um, what's it called? The radio didn't work. So we were just listening to it. No. We were listening to a CD by Bruno Mars over no sam smith it was sam oh, smith i was like bruno mars for 12 hours straight <laughs> sounds like absolute torture it was sam smith's album that we that she stole from starbucks yeah yeah and we were so you're like i'm crying the whole ride we were listening to the whole way and it's peaceful like it's making you fall asleep yeah it's like, won't you stay with me like over and over again we're taking turns every like hour oh what, my god i'm i'm driving i don't know what happened i'm out i wake up I'm still driving. No, I'm still driving. I look over. She's dead asleep. I I pull over and I'm like, girl, Courtney, I just fell asleep. And she goes, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. When I was driving, I also no. That is crazy. So we pulled over and we slept on the side of the road. Oh, and then my we were God. late for work. The yeah, next you're day, like, I don't care. I'm not trying to show like, up. Jesus took the road wheel. Kill. We were so dumb. Oh, we were so dumb. My gosh, that's crazy. Like the fact that we even thought. We could do that after partying for three days straight to drive no, the party. The night. No, 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 no. I've d- I've done that drive overnight before, and it was heinous. And I went straight to a well. It wasn't supposed to be through the night. I was getting my hair done, and I can't remember what was taking so long. I think it just like kept not like they were doing it wrong, and so then I thought I was going to get done with my hair at like four p.m. I didn't get yeah. done until like ten p.m. Then I was in traffic, so it was like so crazy. And I had, to, I had a photo shoot in Salt Lake City at 5 a.m. in the morning. It was like a sunrise shoot for someone's bridals. You had to take it. Yeah. <gasps> and so I was like, oh, I guess I'm driving through the middle of the night. And I literally have to be there at 5 a.m. It was, I'm not going to, I probably had 500 Red Bulls. So then I didn't, then when I got done with the photo shoot and I was able to like sleep. No, I didn't sleep for like two days. Like it was, because I was you're wired, on, wired, on, literally. You were on it. No, driving at night's kind of scary. No, okay. And that's also like not the easiest drive. No, it's not. You're driving through the cannon. No. The, can- the cannon. The cannon. The cannon. The cannon. No, it's kind of sketch. No, it's sketch. And yeah, if you don't have a good car. No, we no. were so dumb. No. We were no, so no. dumb. But that's like one of the very many dumb things. That was like more of a serious dumb thing. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't fall asleep and drive, ladies. Don't also, and drive. don't sleep outside in the middle of the night. Yeah, they're both sleeping things. Like just sleep in your bed. When you're young, like... And you're freshly out of high school and whatever. Like, you just don't care. Like, you have no care in the world. You think you can fly. Yeah. Like, you think you can jump off a cliff and Yeah, survive. you think you're unbreakable. Seriously. No, it's crazy. It yeah. really is. So funny. Well, Ty, I love you. Do you I like to you. be called Ty or do you like to be called Tyson? Either. You can call because me Because I'm like, what What do I say here? But do, ever, do people ever call you Frenchie? No, but I've said this before, but that's what I want to name my only kid. Frenchie? Frenchie French. I love it. Because I was like, I wonder if anybody calls him Frenchie. Don't if tell it, me if you don't like it. Because yeah, some people aren't going to like it. But I'm it, just like, wow, I'm literally setting you up to be the next Paris Hilton. Like, like your name's Frenchie French? No, that's literally it's adorable. Ever, yeah. It's so cute. I have a name that people are going to hate if I have another boy. Really? Because it has to be four letters. Because my tattoo is seven, six, five. Oh my, my gosh, daughter cute. has seven letters. My son has six and the other one has five. Oh my gosh. Wow. You're really so, making it hard yeah, to and, names. and they're all B's. So it has to be four letters and a B. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the you name. can't have more than four kids because then no. what is their name going to be? Bob? No. <laughs> <laughs> literally. But it's Boss. Wait. I love that. B-O-S-S. I love that. Boss Van Dyke. Mm, gorgeous. I'm like... 
okay, he's the boss. No, literally. And like people are gonna be like, okay, but no. also your last name is so perfect, like no, Van Dyke. It's, it's like good. that's sexy. It's that's good. like, guess what? I come from old money. Like we're loaded. Like I'm a Roosevelt. I'm, I'm like, a what, what do they call it? Uh, a Vanderbilt. A Vanderbilt. Yeah. Yep. It's giving yeah, Rockefeller. It's giving like, yeah Rockefeller. What's like, that show? Uh, Gilded Age. It's giving that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Except for my husband's dad was a seminary teacher, so. <laughs> rolling in it rolling in it rolling in it we love it that is crazy <laughs> no it's crazy wow seminary wow, teacher wow. with seven kids we didn't come from any money mister none i none. am shook none yeah no it's my oh, my husband did you take seminary no i did i i was my sloughing period it was a period that i would i would take and i go home yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i'm like, jealous did you graduate i i did yes for those who don't know seminary is literally like mormon church mormon at school. church at school yeah but so in arizona it, arizona in where i lived it's no it's literally where i lived in arizona in gilbert it's literally provo utah okay. like it's okay. like yeah, in, yeah. in your school it's still the same thing um but then when i moved to virginia it got switched to the morning 6 a.m so not only did i move the day before my senior year started from all my friends now i have to take early morning seminary at 5 a.m and I, where I went to school in Arizona, it was like, you have all your class periods in one day. Now they're in two days. So my classes are double the time. They're two hours long. And I, because I took seminary in my school, Virginia doesn't recognize seminary as a credit. So I had no credit. So I had to have a full schedule as a senior. I wanted to literally die. It was heinous. I don't even remember my senior year. I, like, I, no, me either. Because I, I literally a, never went. I was I like, see you. I hate 1. you 1.9. I. One point nine. That's crazy. One point. I was actually pretty good, but I also cheated. So that was me cheating. Yeah. Jail. Dumb. Jail. Dumb. 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 That's me. I'm dumb. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't wait to see all the amazing things that you're gonna do. Thank you. French. I can't wait for the swimsuit line, the tequila line. Thank you. Um, and you being a famous podcaster. Oh my gosh. Number one on Spotify. Oh my gosh. I love it. You and I both. We're up there. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. Hey, you guys. I hope you have the Best week ever. And don't forget to take out your trash. Bye.